crossed my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now, I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hi, guys. Ah, I've missed you so much. I have not been able to record in so long, but I tell you what, I busted my ass and I got all the videos recorded for July. Um, so I know it's really late um, and I know you guys probably didn't expect to hear from me in July but let me tell you July 2017 a year ago is when I started recording monthly videos and the Capricorn in me just could not allow me to just not record for July like you know a part of me felt like I should just jump right to August but no way like cancer season happened okay July happened and I know we want to just leave July in July, and I know it's very much close to August, but I will be doing August videos very fucking soon. Um, but no, July, I felt so, so much energy as an empath for the month of July, you know. So definitely wanted to record messages for you guys. Um, so for those of you who are led to watch this video, you know, there's... I always believe that um, time doesn't exist to tarot, you know, so there could be messages in these videos for you guys and you never know. So if you're led to watch the, the July videos, even though it's very, very close to August, thank you so much because I worked very hard at these messages and um, I just think that, you know, I just care about all you guys. I care about all my viewers and my subscribers, so I definitely wanted to touch base on how the hell July went for all of us, okay? So, as always, I'm going to have my intro video, you know, um, explaining what's, what to look forward to in the reading. All the astrology information for, in general, the planets are going to be in this video. And then in the personal readings, in the next videos, um, there's a little bit more of personal stuff for Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, all the signs personally. But as far as the collective, we had a lot going on. So, something I want to say um, immediately here is that Cancer, you know... July is shared by Cancer and Leo. So we're going to be talking a lot about Cancer and Leo energy in, in the houses that it happens for with, in your sign. You know, as an Aries or a Taurus or a Gemini, these houses matter. So we go into detail about that. Um, and to me, it's just really interesting, the whole Cancer-Leo cusp that we went through, because this is the moon and the sun. This is the mother and the father energy. This is masculine and feminine. So this whole month was a big giant eclipse because of the moon being ruled by cancer and leo being ruled by the sun so the energy we experienced in july anyways was a huge eclipse it was the moon becoming the sun and the sun you know becoming the moon and we even had eclipses in july we entered the month with a grand water trine okay between pisces cancer and scorpio we had the sun in cancer jupiter was in scorpio and pisces had neptune so you know, the beginning of the month was extremely emotional. I mean, cancer season was extremely emotionally exhausting, and at the same time, it was very enlightening. So a lot of the things that I've been telling people on my social media is that cancer season actually awakens the soul because the sun is where the moon is comfortable. So when the sun is in cancer, it's an opposite energy because cancer is ruled by the moon. So awareness, the sun, is, is basically illuminating our soul. So everyone has a moon sign. And so I'm going to go ahead and tell you that you really want to watch for your moon sign for July. So I know that I'm late telling you this, but all I could keep thinking about in July is how much I was resonating with my moon. So I resonated very strongly with the Taurus reading. So that's just a tip. From now um, moving forward, it, you know, you might resonate way more with your moon sign because the moon has been awakened collectively. So for instance, I have a Taurus moon. And the moon, my shadow side, you know, I'm watching more for the Taurus readings now because I know that because of cancer season and because of these eclipses, I resonate more with my moon. So you might want to check out for your moon. Um, now that it's Leo season or, you know, you know, when you guys watch this, it's going to be Leo season. So now, now that it's Leo season, you guys might want to watch, you know, the sun. Like it's going to be our sun is awakening now, but we have to awaken the soul before we can awaken the body. The, the, the sun controls our physical body. So there's been a subconscious soul awakening in cancer season. And so I just wanted to share with you guys that you guys might want to watch for your moon sign this month if you, if you know your moon. Okay, that's just a little tip. You might want to watch for other tarot readers too. You're going to resonate more with your shadow side. The moon is what we hide. The moon is like what we feel at a soul level. 
So, you know, back to this energy that we started the month under, we had a grand water chime. So that's why, you know, there was a lot of emotion in July because the water signs were in a trine in the sky. So a lot of trinity when it comes to our emotion, very powerful stuff. Not to mention, July is the start of eclipse season. This is when these eclipses started rolling in, right? We had that full moon in Capricorn at the end of June, so we entered July with that energy, but it was very, very overmatched by water. So this is eclipse season, you guys. This is retrograde season, okay? So I want to mention to you real quick here that I am offering retrograde readings. I am definitely back recording. So if you guys are interested in a personal reading with me, thank you so much to those of you who got personal readings with me and who were patient. You know, I'm not sure if you guys watched my last videos last month, but um, a lot has been changing with me. I temporarily moved and I moved back and I moved back and I moved back and I was around um, a situation that didn't allow me to read tarot, things like that. But some of you still reached out to me, you still donated to my channel, and, and that just meant the world to me because this is what I do to financially secure myself as an Earth Taurus Capricorn rising. So it just I just wanted to thank you guys who have gotten readings with me. All my readings are so special and it just it just blows my mind that people reach out to me and watch my videos. It's just it's just it's amazing and it just fills my heart. So I do have retrograde readings going on for $30. Um, this is going to be a special all throughout August. I don't even know if, if I get, if it, if it gets good feedback, then I'll probably do it in July too. But basically, um, if you want to know what the retrograde season is going to offer you, I'm going to offer these readings to people, 30 bucks for a retrograde reading. And I'm going to look at your chart um, and I'm going to discuss all the retrogrades and what they mean and how they're affecting you according to your zodiac sign. And um, then I'm going to pull a tarot card. So there's about six planets retrograde. So for each planet that is retrograde, I will pull a tarot card for advice. So I just thought that was a kind of nice service to offer uh, for retrograde season because retrogrades are planets moving backwards. It's planets moving, slowing down, changing orbit. Mercury just went retrograde at the, on the 26th, so we can go ahead and chop that off. Mercury retrograde now. It's going to be retrograde until August 13th, I believe. So Mercury, Mars, Saturn... All these planets have gone retrograde, and Jupiter went direct this month, though. Jupiter went direct on July 10th. So other than it being retrograde season, guys, though, for those of you who want to um, contact me about that, if you're interested in a retrograde reading, please let me know. $30 special. Um, and then, yeah, the next thing there we had going on is Venus. So Venus was in uh, Leo for the first couple weeks of the month, the first week, and then we had Venus enter Virgo. So Venus is Virgo right now. I feel like Venus is going to be in Virgo for a couple more weeks, maybe. So Venus is in Virgo. Um, from On July 9th, Venus entered Virgo. July 10th was when Jupiter went direct. And then on the 13th, that's when we had that Cancer Solar Eclipse, you guys. And that was opposite Pluto. So we had a 20-degree Cancer Eclipse. And then opposite of Cancer is Capricorn, where we had the 20 degrees Pluto. So that eclipse... Eclipses are very powerful. They start new beginnings and endings, even more so than new moons and full moons. So, you know, this was an emotional eclipse. This was like a purifying, uh, cleansing, death and rebirth emotionally. Like, it was very, very powerful. So, you know, I really, really, it really sucks I wasn't here to talk to you about the Capricorn. I didn't talk about the Gemini new moon, the Capricorn full moon, or the Cancer new moon. So I'm like behind three moon cycles, but don't worry, I'm going to be back tomorrow on the 27th talking about the Aquarius full moon, lunar, blood moon, super eclipse, crazy. I'm definitely going to be here to channel some messages for the Aquarius eclipse, guys, tomorrow. So um, next is July 22nd is when the sun enters Leo. Woo -woo. So we move from this emotional, deep, cardinal energy. Like we all wanted to, to, to act from our emotions in cancer season, but there was not shit that we could do. You know, cancer season is very interesting. As a Pisces, I understand this water energy, but man, was it emotional, very emotionally draining. Everyone becomes aware of their emotions. Not everybody's aware of their emotions, but when the sun enters cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, everyone becomes aware of their emotion. And when everyone becomes aware of their emotions, we all start acting from a place of emotion, which isn't normal. You know, not all of us act from a place of emotion. We all have water energy in different places in our chart. So cancer season was pretty, pretty crazy because we all wanted to, you know, be a leader emotionally. We all wanted to act out of these emotions because cancer is the cardinal water sign. Water meaning emotion, cardinal meaning action. So this is emotional action. 
um, turning into passionate fixed stability. So Leo comes in at the, ha the second half of the month to really revive our ego. You know, we go, I don't know about you, but every year in cancer season, I kind of forget that it's only a month. I'm like, well, this is it. This is how life is going to be. We're all emotional and it's water, water, water. But then Leo season comes in and Leo's the North Node right now, guys. So there's stuff about our destiny. There's stuff about um, our ego and pride and our, our authentic self-expression that's coming out here. The sun is ruled by Leo. So that's why Leo season is so symbolic because the sun is right at home. We're going to gain so much awareness over the next month, but I'm going to save a little bit of that information for the Leo video that I do and the August videos that I'm going to have coming out soon, okay? So Leo season is here. Hopefully we feel a little bit less emotional as uh, we go into August. We're still underneath the, the Cancer uh, cusp of oscillation. So there's Cancer energy, there's Leo energy, there's water energy, there's fire. But when water meets fire, there's an evaporation. So this whole month is very evaporating. You know, a lot of us is going to, a lot of us, a lot of parts of ourselves are just going to kind of mystify. You know, it's going to get a little bit steamy, a little bit, a little bit confusing. But it's all about expressing our emotion. Whenever fire and water join up together, which is Cancer and Leo, this July is shared by fire and water. And then August is shared by earth and fire. So we'll talk more about that in August. But this month was about expressing our emotion. Hopefully we express the way we feel, guys. Because the reason why we went through Cancer season was to discover what we felt on a soul level. It was to become cleansed on a maternal level, on a soul awakening level, so that we could step into Leo season knowing the direction forward, knowing our destiny of the North Node, knowing our, our passion and our, our drive, you know what I mean? Knowing who we are at a childlike level. Like Leo is all about innocence and, and becoming a child, but it's also the lion, you know, so it's about being courageous, you know, the things that we weren't brave enough to do at this first half of July, we're all of a sudden going to gain the passion and drive and will and, and fire to do. So there's going to be a lot of things that pick up at the end of July here, and I'm kind of going to get started on these August videos soon so that I can have these messages out sooner. And then sure enough, we end the month here with the Aquarius total lunar, total lunar eclipse on July 27th. Now, remember, Mercury went retrograde. And this, this, this eclipse here, now, I'm going to save this for my video tomorrow, but I just want you guys to keep in mind that this eclipse is conjunct Mars in the South Node. So there's going to be a lot of aggressive releasing that goes on collectively. This is some bizarre energy. This is going to be strange to kind of channel. But Aquarius is my 12th house, and um, I'm definitely... I'm definitely going to channel this Uranian, Mars, Saturnian energy. But this, this eclipse I know is going to be powerful because the, the eclipse in Cancer a couple weeks ago was so powerful too. This is going to be powerful on a collective level though. Cancer was powerful on an emotional level. This Aquarius lunar eclipse is a blood moon. It's going to be visible for two hours for most of us. Just keep, if you guys want to know about those messages, I'm going to have a video coming out tomorrow about that. But... You know, that seems to be a bit, uh, that's it for July. These messages are very intense, you guys. So I really hope that you guys are led to watch. I worked very hard trying to get these recorded by the end of the month. And another thing, you know, guys, cancer is all about the past. So I kept that in mind when I was thinking about, you know, should I do July videos? And I'm like, hell yeah. Because, you know, some of us are going to want to reflect on the month. Like, I just wanted to know what the hell was going on. I just didn't feel right, you know, letting August come in and just starting from August, like, so I, I definitely worked really hard to get these recordings um, out here, so thank you guys so much for um, tuning in and for following me, subscribing, supporting me, um, even when I took that month-long break, you know, if anything, I realized that this is my passion and that this is what I want to do, I want to help people, I want to get messages from the universe and, and get some kind of guidance because holy crap, holy crap there's so much going on in the universe right now that you know the least i can do is try to help people on a spiritual level because there's i've got people that aren't even into astrology coming to me saying hey you know what the hell's going on i'm like well eclipse well cancer season so thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in hopefully uh you enjoy your readings and yeah, I will see you again in August. Bye. Hi, Taurus. Welcome to your July very late videos. I'm sorry. Better late than never, though. So, Taurus, um, I'm not going to go into 
too much astrology in these videos they're already looking like they're gonna be about an hour long so you know especially because I've been away from recording for so long I'm just really focused on getting the messages out and I can't wait so we are gonna jump right into your reading of course there's gonna be certain things that come up about astrology the only thing I can really think about for you Taurus is Uranus Uranus is still very early degree Taurus you know, Cancer is your guys' third house, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. So Cancer season has been all about communication for you. It looks like some of you might be dealing with an Aries because Aries got a lot of communication in their reading as well. So yes, Taurus, this is about your third house of communication. So possibly some emotional conversations coming up in July. Um possibly some short distance travel uh, across water or just traveling because of emotional purposes so you know to me that brings up some sort of you know maybe a funeral or maybe after a breakup you know you have to travel so there's some emotional travel going on with cancer being your third house so yeah Taurus I'm just gonna focus on your energy here um, so that the right messages come out Oh, well, we had the Six of Cups just flop out for Taurus. So definitely some nostalgic, uh, maybe something with kids. But the Six of Cups is the soulmate card, okay? So some of you guys could be really with soulmates this month or doing some soulmates. Oh, hello, Taurus. Doing some soulmates um, encountering, okay? Someone from your past coming back. Or maybe you're just in an environment where the emotions that you used to feel are kind of resurfacing. I wouldn't fucking doubt it because there's all these retrogrades going on. And like I mentioned, Uranus is in Taurus. So Taurus, for the next seven years or so, this whole Uranus-Taurus thing, I mean, we are going to have a retrograde and Uranus is going to move briefly back into Aries, but not enough to really free you from the Uranian influence of sudden change. And you know what, Taurus? It really, it really irritated me to figure out that Uranus's purpose is to literally cause instability. All right, like Uranus is the ruling planet of Aquarius. It's the planet of sudden change, shock, and surprise. And Taurus, if you didn't know, you're a fixed earth sign. And I have a Taurus moon, so I'm really going to pay attention this month to my moon sign because Cancer season is ruled by the moon. Cancer is ruled by the moon. And so it kind of dawned on me that Cancer season brings out our moon shadow side self. So Please make sure to watch your moon sign this month because there's just going to be certain messages there that are really on a soul level, okay? So for me, that's this reading right now. So I'm going to really keep my eye open for anything that I resonate with. Even though I'm not a Taurus, I'm a, I am have a Taurus soul, okay? So whatever your moon sign, please, after you watch your video, go check that out. There might be a message there for you. But anyway, <sighs> Fixed sign Taurus and for Uranus, Uranus is ironically comfortable in fixed energy because Aquarius is a fixed sign. So it's interesting that fixed signs are literally, they are the stability of astrology. Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, Aquarius, fixed. That's why on the, the Wheel of Fortune and on the, the World card, in each corner of the card, we have all the fixed signs of our universe to stabilize the change in, in the cycle that's completing. But yeah. It was quite interesting to figure out that uh, that Uranus causes instability. So this is literally in your first house. You are a Taurus, right? Or you guys might be a moon watching like me. So yay, I've been ha dealing with instability in my emotions. I've been dealing with the instability of my soul and the instability of my shadow side because of Uranus entering my moon. All right, very, very bizarre. So as a Taurus, whether you're a sun, moon, or rising, you are going through this first house energy when it comes to Uranus. So this is causing instability in our lives, Taurus. So if you're a Taurus out there watching and you can't quite feel stable and grounded like you, you usually do, maybe you're dealing with some instability of your resources and values and finances, stuff like it's it's Uranus. So that's really all the astrology I wanted to talk to you guys about. In the intro video, I talked, I'm, hopefully I haven't recorded the intro video yet at this point, but when I do, hopefully I remember to talk a little bit about the moons that we've missed. There's been a Capricorn full moon, there was a Gemini new moon, there was a Cancer new moon eclipse a couple weeks ago on the 13th, and at the end of this month, there is an Aquarius lunar eclipse full moon. So definitely important to watch the moons. 
We are very, very near the end of Cancer season. We've got a few days left. The sun is going to enter Leo on the 22nd of July. So go ahead and hang on for that, Taurus, because Leo is a fixed sign. And whenever the sun enters Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, or Aquarius, the universe is stabilized. So if you have been feeling a little bit unstable, um, don't worry. You're going to feel a little bit more stable, especially passionately and expressive-wise, come Leo season, okay? So we've got your Hierophant card here. I just did some shuffling, and um, we've got the Hierophant here. So this is your ruling card, Tar Taurus. And um, before we start your actual reading, I just wanted to kind of touch base with you guys about where you have been in July. So what this is going to allow me to do is see the energy that is right behind you. It's going to allow me to see the energy that is immediately present with you as we're watching this video. Okay, so we've got the Hierophant. But before I start pulling cards, I just wanted to kind of take a look at the Hierophant card and see if I channel anything. So, you know, Taurus, the Hierophant is also known as the High Priest. So there is a significant priest energy showing up here, whether it be you or whether you're a Taurus that attends church, this is about tradition, this is a commitment. So every time I see the Hierophant card, yes, it is Taurus, but it does talk about a commitment. It does talk about religion. It talks about tradition. And it talks about, you know, a teacher. The, the preacher, teacher. Because if you take a look here, we've got these two dudes, right? We've got these two men that aren't facing the, the front here. And the Hierophant is kind of giving some sort of speech or teaching some sort of lesson to these two people that are looking up in awe, you know? And then I always notice the key here, Taurus, these two keys here. And for me, these keys are significant right now, all right? I'm ch I just want to kind of channel because I do like to be intuitive. And, and when I do that, I kind of just let logic out the door. Pardon me. My moon and my rising, does Capricorn rising, Taurus moon, I don't like to not be logical, but the Pisces in me loves to fantasize and read through illusion. So Taurus, there, there's something here about the key to your manifestation, the key to your power, you know, and it may come in the form of unlocking something while talking to other people this month. <laughs> it's so interesting I just said that because this is all about communication. This third house energy, you are going to be moving into fourth house energy, which is quite emotional. So while Leo season is going to provide stability, it will bring up certain emotions with you because Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, that's four signs away from you. And so Leo is considered your fourth house. So please keep in mind as we enter Leo energy that this might stir up certain emotions with you. It doesn't help that Leo is passionate, so you're going to get very passionate about these emotions. Please be careful not to like rage out. I have a Taurus moon. My moon has been blamed for my aggression sometimes by other people. I didn't know it, but I guess Tauruses can be kind of aggressive. We are bulls. You know, you mess with the bull, you get the horns type thing. So yeah, if a Taurus ever pops off at you if a Taurus is ever violent with you you have really earned it you deserved it basically I hate to say that it's kind of mean but Tauruses are too I don't want to say lazy but we're cows okay we want to eat we want our home we want our fence and we want to eat and we want to be valued if you don't value us if you don't feed us if you don't respect our home environment or what's ours what we what belongs to us our resources then you better duck and you better duck okay so there is something, I don't know about that, Taurus, but I just wanted to mention that Leo is your fourth house, okay? And we're going to have a full moon in Aquarius, which would be your tenth house, right? Yes. So 12, 11, yeah, so we got some career shit going on at the end of the month for you, Taurus. Certain endings and beginnings, and if there's anything, if you guys have been working any places that don't serve you, they're going to be eclipsed out of your life. So you could very well be walking into August with a new job or new long-term goals or new financial opportunities or certain endings and beginnings, okay? So as far as this Mr. Hierophant here, Mr. and Mrs. Hierophant Taurus, I just see some sort of key, the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys, the keys. The key to something is going to be revealed to you. It might be two different keys. Maybe you guys have some sort of decision to make when it comes to two different doors you're gonna open this month, okay? Because we've got two different keys facing two different opposite directions. So that, that shows me that you have the wisdom 
to unlock doors, metaphorical doors, right? This is you entering new phases of your life, right? Entering, entering things that were not non-accessible before. And so this could be, for example, there could be a certain tourist listening that has always wanted a certain position at the job they're working in, but because of a certain thing, they didn't have the key. They didn't have the ability to enter that realm of their life. Well, this key is gonna be given to us tourists in July. And um, what we do beyond that point is up to us, but there is something here about closing one door before opening another, okay? Be very mindful about opening multiple doors this month, Taurus, because before you know it, you've got demons in your hallway, okay? Because I'm seeing a long hallway right now with a lot of, like, a hotel or something. And I don't know about you, but when I'm alone at home, well, this, when I was a kid, when I was a kid and I'd be home alone, I used to like all the doors shut, even if it was daylight. Even if it was daylight, it just made me feel comfortable to have, I'd sit in the living room and I'd have all the, the bathroom doors shut, the bedroom doors shut. So I'm starting to, I'm, I don't know why spirit is doing that to me, but just be careful with open doors. So there could be open doors in relationships, like maybe you guys aren't together anymore, but you're leaving the door open for possibility. Be careful, Taurus, because these keys aren't just to unlock, they're to lock as well. And this is speaking to me, and I kind of want to show you, but I don't know if I can. I have a, a keyhole tattoo. Oh, this is the wrong side of my chest. But anyway, I don't know. I'll show you guys later. But I have a keyhole on my chest. So that is kind of, so, you know, it just goes to show you how creative this kind of intuitive channel can be. So just keep in mind, Taurus, you can unlock doors and you can lock doors this month. Like, you got the key to the streets. Taurus is the key this month. Or there's something, there's a key element. Because you know how sometimes I say that too. It might not be a real logical metaphorical key. But there's, there's, the, there's the key. You know what I mean? There's a key answer here. You're going to get a lot of key answers this month. But be careful not to open a door before you close the other one. All right? And that's just kind of what I'm channeling from this Hierophant. I always see that there's two, there's three people. So some of you guys, especially if it comes to relationships, close one door before you open another one. So if you've been confused between two people or if there's a person who's confused between you and another, if there's any third party situations going on, you need to take the position of the, the high priest, Taurus, and just use your, be traditional. Stay true to your values, you know what I mean? Don't go unlocking things for other people and, and please be careful what you allow into your home. Okay, and I know that's going to speak directly to some of you Tauruses because home is so important to Taurus and it's going to get a lot more important to Taurus come Leo season. So that's what I'm channeling here. Definitely what I'm getting from this right now is those keys. So be careful what you unlock this month, especially if you're unlocking yourself to other people. So I don't know, guys. I don't know why that's coming up. Let me know if there's anything significant with that. But that is what my guides are showing me. They're showing me a hallway with a bunch of doors opened, and I don't feel like you and I like it. Taurus are very stable, and the more doors that you open, the more opportunity you, you allow you know, instability into your life. So just be careful what you're unlocking and what you're locking because there's some kind of crossroads here. And, you know, for us to move forward in a stable way, we need to kind of choose something with our all. Taurus are very dedicated lovers. We're very, very loyal. So whatever we do by the end of August, whatever, we're gonna, we're gonna have a decision made by the end of August. And whatever that decision is, we need to run with it and basically throw away the key is what I just heard. Choose one key and throw the other one away so that you can never unlock that again. Because we don't want any doorways being left open so that people can come and go as they please. You know how we are about our home, Taurus. You know, only certain people get the key to our house. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm getting there, Taurus. Hopefully that kind of resonates. But let's move forward. I'm going to pull four cards to see where our energy is in July. So, you know how I was talking about that crossroads, Taurus, and how these keys are kind of crossed and that we might have to choose between two things? Well, I'm right. I was right because now we have the two of wands. So, the two of wands is a crossroads. Anytime we see the two of anything, we have a crossroads. And this is one of my favorite cards when it comes to the two because we do have the two of cups, the two of swords, the two of... um. Pentacles. This is the two of fire. So not only are we at a crossroads, but both of the roads that we have to choose from are in flames. 
So they both look fiery. They both look passionate. They look like really expressive roads to choose, but Tauruses are very indecisive, right? At least I've been called that because of my Taurus moon. I can be very indecisive. Now, this isn't choosing between spaghetti and Alfredo. Personally, I would choose Alfredo, but that's just me. <laughs> um, at this point, either would do because I'm kind of getting hungry. But yeah, Alfredo for me. What about you? Anyway, guys, that's just a little jokey joke. This is not some decision between, oh, left or right. Well, it is kind of a decision between left or right, but it's not that simple. It's There's a huge gray area here that we're standing in the middle of because, and so July is spent indecisive for Taurus I'm seeing and we're trying to be we're trying to take that third party perspective so some of us could have two things exterior to us so we could have two what I'm saying is two jobs to choose from or two people to choose from do I be with him or do I be with him or do I be with her or do I be with him do I be with her or do I be with her do I move here do I move here like the thing about the two of wands is that both of the options that you have to choose from are equally important. They're both going to help you and they both have different opportunities along the way. But the main difference here between these two wands, right? Obviously, there's one that's a little bit different than the other because if you can see, he's actually hanging on to one of the wands and the other one is left behind him. So there is a, de there's a, a decision that you're leaning more towards, Taurus, but you're still indecisive. If this has to do with a home environment, this is going to be really hard for us because there's going to be different things about both living situations that are kind of easy, kind of difficult. So I'm going to recommend that we get out a piece of paper and literally fold it down the middle. On one side, we write the positives. On the other side, we write the negative, And then we kind of just stabilize it from there. But anyways, the main difference between the two of wands is that here's these two roads, right? They're both passionate. They're both fiery. They're both great, right? They're both happy and whatever. But the one road is, is a road that you've walked many times in life. It might look a little bit different. Like, okay, maybe maybe you've walked a road with roses. And you well, it's interesting that I said that. There's roses right there. But maybe you've walked a road where they were they were aligned with roses, right? This and this is just a metaphor. I'm trying to keep it simple. And so there's a road to choose between now that has a road that's lined with daisies. And then there's another road that doesn't have flowers at all. So you see what I mean? Like there's a familiar road that you've been around. There, this road, this choice, okay, if it's a job, then maybe, and I'm, I'm not trying to diss you, Taurus. I'm just going to use this really smooth example. So some of you have been working at like, you know, and I don't hate on McDonald's. I love McDonald's. I eat it often, unfortunately. So, okay, let's say you're working at a restaurant like that, right? So you've got this new decision in July to work at a fucking, be the corporate boss of um, some kind of like company, right? Not a, not McDonald's, not a fast food restaurant at all. But then you have this other job that is really close to your house that is like right down the street. So yeah, you'd save on gas, but it's still burgers and fries. It's Burger King. So do you please, I really hope you understand what I'm trying to say, Taurus, that Right now in July, we basically are in the between a crossroad and one option is completely new. There's a, there is something being presented to Taurus in July where it is completely new. And that is not necessarily something that Taurus likes because Taurus, like I said, we are bulls, we're cows. So we have gotten to know this field. We eat the same grass every day. We, we have our environment. We, we like our environment to stay stable. We don't want our home or our, we don't want our finances or anything like that. to We don't want our resources to change that much because we've already stabilized it, right? So what we have to decide between now and July is if we're going to do the same old thing that we've always done or are we going to choose the option that is going to grow us? So here we have an option between comfort and adventure. So yes, if you choose option A, you're going to be really good at it because you've always done it because you've always but it's not going to make you grow at all because you've already challenged you've already accomplished you've already completed these abilities but if you choose the the brand new something you've never done before something that you haven't done in a long time or something you're not real comfortable with then it's going to expand your horizons into something way better excuse me i had to like burp but i tried to say better at first so yeah, Taurus, I'm not sure which one you're leaning more towards. Now, some of us are going to choose that more comfortable route because we're all in different 
places in our life right now, right? So for some of us, we're on we're in a different path. Some of us very well, we have some of us have children, some of us have jobs, some of us have commitments and you know, this does have a lot to do with our commitments. Some of us have different beliefs. So, you know, Taurus, it's all about you. You need to follow your intuition here. You need to follow your intuition about what direction you need to go in. And you just have to decide. By the end of July and moving into August, you need to really be on a path. And whether it's a it's a it's the same path that you've already walked that you're walking again, no two paths can be walked the same way twice. Okay? Even if you walk the same path twice, you're gonna be moving differently. You're not gonna be walking it the first time or the second time or the third time. It's gonna be your fourth time, so you're gonna be walking it a little bit better. There's nothing wrong with choosing the familiar, but there is an element here about, you know, there's only so much you can gain from familiar territory, right? So if you're a Taurus watching this that has an opportunity in July to expand their horizons, please do so. Because this is right, this is your energy right now. This is the card that is right behind you, Taurus. So I know that when you're watching this video, if you're led to watch this video, you are a Taurus that most likely has a crossroads that you are at. And we can't just hang out in the middle, right? We can't just be that Taurus that doesn't make a decision because that's not stable. That's not stability. Stability is being committed to one thing. Remember I told you, be careful. Don't open one door before you close another one. So some of us need to close a familiar door and before we unlock the door to adventure, before we unlock the door to something unknown. This is literally a decision between the seen and the unseen, the known and the unknown. So are you a comfortable Taurus? Are you a Taurus that's bored and wants adventure? And either way, Taurus, whatever path you choose, if you choose the path you've always chosen, please know that whatever path you choose, you're going to have to be a very committed version of yourself. You're going to have to be committed to whatever. So make sure whatever path you choose that you're willing to commit to it entirely because there is no half ass anymore. And so now we have the high priestess. This is a very all-knowing energy. So there's something here about trusting your intuition. And I'm already noticing the similarities between these three cards. And I don't think Spirit did this on, on accident because we've got, we've got a figure in between two things, right? You see these two pillars? So I love the High Priestess and the Taurus card. So we have the High Priestess and the High Priest here. We have a female priest and a female priest. And what is a priest? No, it's not someone in a church. It's someone with spiritual authority. It's someone with spiritual wisdom. So no matter if you're a female or a male watching, we literally have the high priest and the high priestess. So this is kind of a duo. This is a couple. Some of you may be in religious relationships with other people or spiritual relationships. Some of you could be in a position, oh, there's a butterfly on my window. That's pretty. So some of you could be in sp high positions of spirituality. Some of you could be a priest, but if you are, you might not be watching a tarot video because some people of religious uh, background don't appreciate tarot. They think it's evil, but whatever. I This is relating to me because I'm Pisces priestess. Here's the high priestess. I'm a Taurus moon, and I am definitely a spiritual leader. You know, So this is kind of, kind of ringing a bell for me. So I just wanted you to know that both of these figures are in between these two pillars. And then we have a figure that's in between these two wands. So either way, Taurus, we are in between two opposing... We're just surrounded by things this month, right? So there's something here about a com taking a making a committed choice, committing to one thing. You know, remember, closing one door before you open another one. And really following your intuition this month. Because there's just certain things that you know intuitively right now, Taurus. And you just know it emotionally and spiritually. You know, the high priestess, she doesn't speak a lot. And remember, speaking is coming up a lot for you. This is the third house. So even though cancer is your third house, you know, sometimes cancers don't speak a lot because they know that they know a lot. So there might have been things you didn't speak on this month, Taurus, because of the spiritual privacy of it. There is spiritual privacy coming up here. You could be doing a lot of things in secret. You may make a decision in secret and not tell anybody about it. Maybe Taurus is about to make a decision and not tell anybody their next move, right? I feel like this is a not only a decision you make with your intu your this isn't only a decision you make intuitively. This is a decision you make spiritually on your own. And you don't tell anybody about it. You know, you don't really you don't really talk to anybody about it. Because your third house right now is on hush-hush. 
So it's interesting that Cancer is your third house. This is a Cancer energy. This is Pisces Cancer. Some of you might have a decision to choose between a Pisces or a Cancer. Or it might just be an emotional decision. But what I'm really getting from this is that you have a spiritual... It's like choose your spiritual path, Taurus. Choose the path of your... The, the traditions of your value. The traditions of your beliefs. Your beliefs are coming up here a lot. And you're at a crossroads between your beliefs and your reality. You're at a crossroads between, you know, all that you've worked for. Definitely all that you've worked for. We've got the Eight of Pentacles here. The Eight of Pentacles is someone who is working really hard on their own worth, their own value, their own job, their own career, their own resources. So, Taurus, this month, well, it's not even this month. This is your energy right now. So, I feel like Taurus is working really hard behind the scenes making money in spiritual ways, making money, secret money, you know, be careful not to get caught up in the illusion of your worth or the illusion of your own finances because, you know, that might keep you hanging out in between those two wands for longer, okay? But this is happening under the surface, like, this is what I'm feeling more so with this combination is that Taurus is doing a lot of spiritual psychic work. Some of you guys could be really doing some work in the dream realm. So if you're a Taurus energy that's been dreaming more, well, just know that even if your physical body isn't at work, your spiritual body is. I mean, we have the high priest and the high priestess. Come on now. That's a religious leader. So you're working really hard. Some of you are working really hard on your emotions, on your intuition, on your spirituality. Or you're just working hard behind the scenes. And no one really knows where Taurus is, but they're just working their ass off. Working on your spiritual values. Working on your, your the values of your beliefs. But I just see this high priestess as a very secretive energy in your reading. I don't always see the high priestess as a, as a secret, but I do right now. So there's certain light and dark aspects to Taurus this month that are, you're kind of sitting in the middle of the spectrum. So it may be okay to hang out in the middle of this portal for a while, but I would make a decision by the end of the month though, Taurus, because you've put in a lot of hard work here. Spiritual work, emotional work, physical work, financial work, mental work, all of all of the works, okay? You've been working really hard behind the scenes, and hopefully you're still somehow getting validation for that. So that's your four cards, Taurus, and overall, just to kind of summarize, we have the King of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. So this is definitely, you're right now as you're watching this video, you're definitely concerned about your home life, concerned about your finances, concerned about you know, your career and your long-term goals, right? You're concerned about what you are. You are an earth sign. So it's only right that the kid... Now, some of you could be dealing with a Taurus Virgo Capricorn, a very significant Taurus Virgo Capricorn. So that might apply to some of you. Some of you could be at a crossroads financially or at a job. And it's like, I've worked so hard at this job and I, I just probably about to choose a different job because they're taking too long to promote me or... I just haven't seen financial payoff here, you know. You've worked really hard behind the scenes. So this decision has a lot to do with the hard work that you've done secretly, you know. It's inner work. What this is is inner spiritual work, you know. And it's Taurus, nobody talks to you about that enough. Everybody talks to you about, you know, your job and pinnacles and money and material. Oh, Taurus is the second house of values and resources, la, 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 la. Well, Taurus is also the high, the high priest, Taurus is the Hierophant card in Tarot. So a lot of the work that Taurus does is in silence, is in secret, is on an inner level, right? Taurus is spiritual, you know, just in a very grounded way. So I see some kind of spiritual crossroads. I see that you're at a crossroads between what you believe. You're at a crossroads between what you intuitively see. Like your intuition is telling you different things about these two different choices, right? Right? But either way, you've put in a lot of hard work to get where you are, Taurus. So make sure you follow your intuition. And it's up to you what path you ultimately go down, okay? But it's going to be one where you probably consider your, your knowing you, Taurus, you're going to choose the best route for your resources. You're going to change, you're going to choose the best route. Now, the problem is, is if you choose, if you go that route, if you choose the route where you have a better home and a better job and a better finances and lots of resources, you know how we are about our resources, Taurus. We literally, the scariest thing for a Taurus is to potentially put themselves in a position where their stability is going to be questioned. 
So this is a matter of stability here, and we're probably going to choose the road that is best for our stability. But that might go against our intuition. It, it might alter our beliefs a little bit. It, it might alter our finances. But I really don't see that as much. I see us choosing comfort and, and finances and resources over our intuition, over our emotion. And I can definitely agree with that because that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to choose a decision for myself that is healthier for me as an earth sign. It, it might not be best for me spiritually or emotionally, but it's a, it's a choice I'm willing to, to make. And it's a, it's a risk I'm willing to take because I know how hard I've worked and I don't like putting in work and not seeing the outcome of it. So Taurus, that might, that might apply to you. So let's get into your actual reading. That was just the energy that you needed. That, that was you right now. Whenever you watch this video, that is your energy. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual spread. I'm using the Wisdom of the House of Night deck this month. Um, just because Cancer is really, really deep water. You can't always see. So we've got the Wisdom of the House of Night. I'm going to get you four cards, Taurus. The this, this first two cards are for... The first two weeks of July, the second two cards are, are the ending of July. So we're going to look at how you came into July. We're going to look at how we're going into August. Okay, so let's see what's going on for Taurus, the fixed earth sign, sun, moon, and rising, and Venus, and cross watchers, whatever. What does Taurus need to know? Let's get a, a, a spread out here for Taurus energy for July 2018. So we've got your first card, and it is chaos, chaos, Taurus, the storm, the upheaval. This is Uranus, hello. But we've got that number nine. So I don't know if some of you are with a Sagittarius. You could be dealing with a certain specific chaotic Sagittarius energy, or you could be dealing with, you know, you know, things being chaotic in your life for you to gain higher knowledge because number nine is all about higher knowledge it's Sagittarius and we do have the high priestess of earth or I'm sorry air so we got the underlying energy here of this chaos the reason why chaos came out is because of the number six because of your lifestyle because of an air sign a Gemini Libra Aquarius or because of your mind because of your intellect so this is a mental chaos chaos usually is I highly doubt any of you watching actually saw a tornado this month. If you did, so sorry. Um, you know, I have a lot of dreams about tornadoes. And I've had so many reoccurring dreams about tornado. Like, literally, I'll have a dream where I see this motherfucker. And it's like, uh, yeah, I get it, spirit. I'm supposed to learn from those dreams. But do you have to show me? Like, I have dreams where there's like six cyclones. And not only that, but there's like six cyclones, so weird that I said the number six. It's like six cyclones coming out of the sky, and then they join together as one big mother tornado. I never get hurt, and I know, And my main point of saying that is I do learn from my tornado dreams because uh, what they mean is that your life is in a chaotic swirl. Tornadoes symbolize chaos, so it's kind of interesting there. But this, this chaotic thing is most likely happening because of an air sign energy. Or it's chaotic communication. It's it's the way we're thinking about our lifestyle. We might remember this is all about communication, Taurus. So some of us are really we're like dealing with chaotic communication with people, which is basically arguments. Chaotic communication is is arguments, right? So yeah, some of us could be dealing with a, a significant chaotic Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. Others of us are just dealing with you know chaos mentally because this is the High Priestess of Air. And the high priestess of air is about your mind. It's about how you communicate. It's air sign energy. It's about your thoughts. So I feel like this is happening in our mind, like me, how I'm having dreams. That's chaos in my mind. Um, so yeah, and if there's anybody that can handle this, tornadoes are air, you know? So it's literally a cyclone of air. So it's like literally the high priestess of air is here to kind of ground us throughout this. And if our life, if you feel like, if your mental perception of your lifestyle right now is chaotic, Taurus, then it's all about really expressing what you think. So I'm going to keep shuffling here. 
but it's telling me that we entered July in a very chaotic state, which I, I definitely did. Second card out is belonging. Very beautiful card. And we've got playful at the bottom of the deck. And we've got the number 44, which is definitely significant for me. I just had a dream last night where the number 44 was in it. So this is about playful. This is about being playful when it comes to, well, definitely playful sex. Okay, if any of you guys... Taurus is one of the most sexy, freaky signs. So this is about really getting playful when it comes to all aspects of our life. Sexuality, spirituality, friendships, romantic. It's about getting playful, right? And this is definitely a little Leo. You know, we've got this little lion, little tiger there. So this is about Leo season being very playful, right? And then we've got the number eight, which is August. So August looks like it's going to be very playful for Taurus. We're going to be playing around a bit, you know, being more joyful, kind of more innocent and childlike. But we've got belonging. Okay, so we entered the month. Maybe some of us didn't really know where we belonged, even though this card talks about wherever you are, you have been chosen and you are there for a reason. So even if you are right underneath that tornado, you are there for a reason, Taurus, and you are there to learn something about your foundation. Because we've got this beautiful home that looks like a haunted house, but it's really not. It looks scary, but inside there's a lot of light. All the lights are on in this house. So, you know, it's about belonging where you are, Taurus. So wherever you were going into, wherever you were going into the month coming into July is like you belonged in this kind of place of chaos. You belonged in this place of chaos. I'm going to light this candle in a minute, but it's going to involve me going to get my lighter and I really just want to get the rest of your cards first. So not only that, Taurus, but we've got the number 41. I don't know if that's important to any of you, but four plus one is five. So it's about you belonging and five is another, uh, another thing for leo leo is the fifth house so we've got the fifth house coming up here kind of because we've got a house and then we've got the number five up there so the fifth house of leo um when the sun enters the fifth house of leo it is going to add a lot of light to the chaotic darkness it, it may even we might have you know what some of us have been dealing with chaos in our home environment i know i have and taurus does not like People, places, and things that act as tornadoes in our home, right? We like a stable home. We like our territory to be under control. So we might have dealt with a little bit of chaotic darkness. We might even deal with that a little bit in Leo season, but it is so that we can learn where we belong, where we truly belong. So we went through chaos. And, you know, tornadoes uproot houses, right? Tornadoes uproot. <laughs> it's so funny what I just saw in my head. My spirit guides are really funny. You know, Taurus are cows. And some of those tornado movies be having cows flying in the air. So Taurus, we got uprooted in July. A lot of us did. I know I fucking did. I moved half-assed to my sister's house, somewhere I'm not comfortable, somewhere where everything was just, this is like the tower, okay? So this is like the tower in tarot. I wouldn't be surprised if the tower came out here. But if there's anything I know about the tower, is that the universe caused it for a reason. Wherever we were at the end of June, wherever we were in April or even March, it wasn't good for us anymore. We didn't belong there. So when we don't belong somewhere, sometimes the universe creates a, a, a cyclone to uproot our house. It's kind of like the Wizard of Oz. I'm, I'm getting the Wizard of Oz here, you know. But Dorothy's house landed in Oz, you know, the wonderful Wizard of Oz. So it's about this chaos uprooted our home environment. It uprooted us in July. Some of us dealt with this uprooting in relationships. Some of us dealt with this in a job. Some of it, we all dealt with this in a different way. But all I know is going into July, we felt uprooted. And it was so we could transform. It was so we could learn more about where we belong. So I really do feel like there's a significant group of Taurus out there that dealt with um, the scarcity of losing their home in July, but for some reason that was meant to be, you know, it, it, we may even deal with that a little bit more in Leo season because we've got the fifth house here, belonging in the fifth house. But what that means is we belong in a place of happiness. We belong in a place of peace, somewhere we can be ourselves, right? Somewhere where we can be playful and have fun and be who we truly are. So first couple weeks of, of July looked a bit 
looked a bit chaotic, Taurus. It looked a bit scary and, and uprooting, and that's not not anything that any earth sign would ever get in line for. You know, like, hey, uproot me. I'm a Taurus Virgo Capricorn. Like, hell no. Trees do not like to be uprooted, but, you know, there's things like tornadoes that do that. Tornadoes uproot cows and cars and houses and, you know, but it's about the calm after the storm, okay? I know it's usually the calm before the storm, but, you know, after the tornado leaves, yes, there's debris and rubble everywhere after this tower crumbles, but at least then we'll know what wasn't meant to be and what we can build now, okay? So that's what we're kind of focusing on moving into the second week of August. Like now we've, we've dealt with this cyclone, right? We've dealt with the tornado, the wicked witch of the west. We've dealt with it. So now, now that we have a better sense of where we belong, let's move into the second week of July. And, and this is kind of our present moment here. So I'm interested to see how we end the month. So let's get a card for Taurus, the fixed earth's energy. Fixed earth sign. The playful card almost came out again. So the end of the month is definitely meant to be more playful, less serious. I mean, how do you see any little kids playing? I don't know about you, but if there's a tornado anywhere near me, I would definitely not be playing. So I, I see why playful didn't quite come out. But the end of the month is about being a little bit more playful. But the card that came out, Taurus, is the number 28. Don't forget. So there's some kind of reminder here coming up underneath the chaos. And it's in the cement. So the tornado did not uproot a certain reminder. There is a certain reminder here that is still rooted in the ground even after this tornado. And it's a reminder here about a new beginning. Because the reason why the, the, the reminder card came out is the fledgling. Now this is like the fool card in tarot. This is like the number one. This is the first card of the tarot deck. So the fledgling is all about a new beginning. It's all about a fresh start, you know, taking some sort of risk to start completely new. And I don't know about you, but after a tornado comes and ruins somebody's house, they have to move. You know, yes, it's really sad. We missed that house. Someone might have got hurt. We might have even lost a dog. But you know what? We keep moving as a family and we find a house to live in, even if we go stay with Uncle Jack for a little while. Some of us might have had to stay temporarily with other family members because of some kind of chaos that went on in our home at the beginning of Ju uh, July. And I actually know a few Tauruses that went through that. You know, certain Tauruses had, had to, they, they're not living, they weren't living at home in July because something happened at their home, you know, like there might have been a leak here or, I'm telling you, to, all Tauruses were, we dealt with certain things in the home environment. And I think it's because Taurus is heading into that home environment come Leo season. So the universe kind of gave us a jump start that way we could go into Leo season knowing where we belong, knowing that we belong where we're most happy, knowing that we belong where we're most grounded. But, you know, it's it's hard to move a cow if it doesn't want to get moved, right? Have you ever tried to move a cow? <laughs> well, cows are really heavy, and I'm just using that cow example. My spirit guides keep showing me a cow, and you can push the side of a cow, and it will. they are so grounded, they'll just keep eating the grass. Like, they literally don't even care. Like, you might get a moo out of them or a groan out of them, but they're not going to move from their foundation. So it's going to take something like a fucking tornado to, to move a Taurus away from something. So all of us dealt with the tower. We all dealt with this chaos in July so that when it dies down, when we, we can go through Leo season with happiness. We can just, you know, when we handle everything that needs to be handled before the fun happens well then we can actually take part in the fun so we're gonna have a lot of fun in july and there's a reminder here of that chaos though because and why would there need to be a reminder of the chaos well because things are going to start looking up and if we forget what we learned while we were up in that cyclone then what was the point because remember the number nine is up here so the number nine is all about higher learning and education and it's like not forgetting what we learned about that chaotic tower, right? And don't forget that there is a completely new journey. You know, there's a reminder here about a new journey starting at the end of July for us. So let's get your last card, Taurus. And there it is. And it's the same for Aries. Oh my God. We've got the strength card, which I feel is very significant to have at the end of the month because this is the card for Leo. Leo is the strength card. 
So Aries and Taurus both got Leo right here. We, we, Aries and, and Taurus both got the strength card. And look what's at the bottom of the deck. Apparently this wanted to hang out. This is the fledgling. So some of you could be dealing with an Aries. If you are, you might want to do some cross-watching because we, we got some Aries energy showing up here. And both of you and Aries both got this strength card, which I love seeing this here because we are ending the month in Leo season, which means we are ending the month in strength and being strong, you know? So, you know, Taurus, I just see that the beginning of the month was a bit chaotic but it was only so that we could figure out, I mean, I'm telling you, some of us went through chaos in the home. Some of us went through, you know, separations with partners and um, significant others or children. There was some, something, I don't know what this tornado is for each and every one of you, but I know what it is for me and I know what it is for some of my Taurus friends. The universe fucks with Taurus's home environment sometimes to teach them a lesson. So, yeah, chaotic start to the to July, especially with all the retrogrades and eclipses and full moons. And But at least we know where we belong now, Taurus. A lot of us are going to be moving into different homes come August. We're going to be moving where we're going to be staying for at least a few months. And then we move into the end of the month with a reminder here. And I can't wait to clarify this because I'm not sure what this reminder is about other than the fledgling. So there's some kind of reminder here about a new beginning. But it's also underneath the chaos. So it's like, remember what you learned about the, the chaos. Remember what you learned about, you know, the home environment and stuff like that. And then there's a, a sense of belonging in our strength, Taurus. Because this strength card talks all about being that tr rooted tree. This is a very old oak tree. And you want to know what this card says right from the book? I just read it for Aries. Um, or I read it for a personal reading before I did the Aries reading. Well, what it says right in the book is that no matter how strong the wind blows, this tree will not be uprooted. It literally says that. I almost want to show you so you believe me. No matter how strong the wind blows, the, the roots of this tree, and you know, roots are coming up for you because Leo season is your fourth house of roots, home environment. So Leo energy, all of Leo season is going to be very important for you, Taurus, to really establish the sense of be wherever you feel you're belonging at you know where do you belong at where are your roots where are where is your foundation Taurus because for Taurus that is their home right in their job and stuff like that so there is a sense of you know no matter how strong the winds are from this tornado we are going to stay grounded in our roots our family is going to stay have a, a firm foundation still we're going to still continue to work hard on that right no matter how chaotic it gets you know, I still value this, Taurus says. I still value this. So let's start clarifying. The underlying energy of this whole reading is a new beginning. So this has something to do with some sort of new beginning. All right. And the first card out is Justice. And it's very, very freaking interesting because Libras happen to be the angels of chaos. You can look that up. I have definitely heard Libra associated with the Archangel of Chaos. And it's because Libra is the seventh house of relationships. So some of us are definitely going through this chaos in July in our relationships. Others of us are just going through this chaos karmically. This is a karmic chaos. Everything that happened symbolically for this tornado, whatever this tornado symbolizes for you, it was karmic. It was meant for you so that you could balance it out. It was meant for you so that you could find your truth so that things could be in har harmony. Sometimes destruction has to come so that peace can have a purpose. Do you see what I mean there? Without destruction, there is no need for peace. It's kind of like light and dark. So this was karmic chaos and it's being balanced out. Um, some of you might have a chaotic Libra in your life. You know, Libra and Taurus are both ruled by uh, Venus. So I'm just seeing a lot of different messages here about our relationships. And about love so this could be self-love but I definitely see and keep in mind this is relationships with moms and dads and you know brothers sisters daughters sons friendships co-workers whatever we have relationships with all things so this could be a chaotic relationship with our dog you know what I mean which I have sometimes <laughs> I have a little chihuahua right here hi Bubba. hi baby you coming in here to see us but yeah, you know, this is blatantly talking about a Libra energy. So if you have Libra energy, or if you're dealing with a significant Libra, 
um, they're coming up here as as chaos. But just just keep in mind that Libra is is definitely capable of balancing this chaos out. So if it's not a Libra that you're dealing with with this chaos with, it's it's your relationships, Taurus. It's Venus, you know, it's Venus energy. It's it's definitely relationships, whether they be romantic, platonic, friendship, coworker, whatever. There's just some chaotic relationships that need um, balancing out coming into July. So hopefully we, we kind of mastered that by the end of the month. It's so interesting. I did think of Libra as soon as that chaos. I always think of Libra when I see the chaos card. Now, some of you, the underlying energy of why this uh, balance, why this justice is here. Now, keep in mind, we this does this is a, a straight up sign that we will gain justice. So, if there was a, a person, place, or thing that caused this chaos in our life, well, I'd hate to be them because karma, this chaos was directly connected to karma. I see. So if there was a person, place, or thing that caused this chaos with ill intent, now if they accidentally caused chaos, like maybe karma won't completely comp destroy them. But this is karma, okay? This is, some of you could be dealing with chaotic legal situations. So this is the legal, this is a judge, all right? So we've got some judges coming up. So this is court. Some of you may have something really serious about court. Going into July, you had court, you had child support, um, just legal matters, you know, going into a court, uh, maybe jail time, stuff like that. Something where there was literally a judge and karma was served or something like that. And they might be causing some chaos in your life with a Libra. Um, so yeah, that's very interesting there that that chaos is, is connected to justice. But I just wanted to let you know that we will gain justice over this chaos. And it was karma. It will balance itself out. This is a very, I like this card on the chaos card because it completely takes my worry away from it. Like, oh, it'll balance out. This was just for our truth. And this was, you know, obviously another air energy. So this is cardinal air. So Libra is the cardinal air sign. So if there's anything that could cause a tornado it would be you know cardinal communication so some of us this is simply just chaotic conversations and that turned into fights heading into july right but either way my main message there is that we're going to get justice over this chaos in our life and back to this underlying energy before i continue to shuffle this could be a chaotic love offer from a libra from your past like there could be a Libra in your past that is coming back. To, maybe they offered you something. Maybe you got a chaotic message from them. Some of you are um, communicating emotionally with chaotic Libra energy. Or or maybe you're just communicating, right? It doesn't have to be a Libra. It could be your relationship. Because Libra symbolizes all relationships. It symbolizes love. It symbolizes karma. So the Page of Cups is an emotional message. Now, this is a Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio. But remember, it could be any sign if it's not a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or a Libra, then it is, um, you know, justice coming in because of some kind of emotional message that you get. So maybe you were dealing with chaos for the first half of July, but you finally got a message that kind of calmed the waters behind you because we do have a message here. Now, some of you, this is a pregnancy or maybe finding out that someone's pregnant or maybe finding out that someone isn't pregnant. It depends, but this is a fertility card, and this is also a new love. This is like communicating with a new lover, because every page is a message. So I feel like we get we gained justice over something chaotic because of either a new love that came in and, and helped us clear the chaos, or a new love, or a new message. Some of you guys got a message an emotional message at the beginning of July that kind of took you away from this chaotic state, right? It maybe poured you with love again. It, it calmed your emotional state, right? So I'm not sure which way that's going for you, Taurus, but I'm seeing a couple different messages here about, you know, us gain, like the reason why the justice card is on the table is because of the page of cups. So we gained justice or maybe some of us, there's a new, there's a Libra. If you're a Taurus out there, that got a message from a Libra in July, then that's that's what's up. That's you. But others of us are just we 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 gained karmic balance over this chaos because of some sort of emotional conversation that took place or some kind of new message. It could have been a text message, a voicemail, a letter in the mail, or something. 
but this is a, an emotional message, emotional communication, where things kind of balanced out, the water in the background kind of got a little bit cooler, you know what I mean? So it depends on what that means for you guys, but yeah, let's go ahead and see why belonging is here. We're going to get a clarifier for belonging. Why is belonging here for Taurus? Oh, wow. 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 We have the Ten of Cups on the belonging card. So that definitely tells me, Taurus, that you belong in a place of happiness. And what did I tell you? We have the 41 up there. 4 plus 1 is 5. You belong in a place of happiness. You do not belong in a place of chaos. You belong in a place of harmony and love. And you belong in a place of emotional fulfillment. What makes a, a Taurus emotionally fulfilled? Being around their resources, being around their stability, being around their family. So some of you who have family, we've got a happy family going on here. We've got a completion. So while the chaos was very emotional, you gained justice over it. Some of you wound up in a better place anyway. That that tornado destroyed a crappy house and you guys got it all. You got the land, you got the beautiful house, the kids. So definitely belonging in a place of emotional happiness. Now the reason why the Ten of Cups came out is because of the Eight of Cups. So some of us walked away at the beginning of July from something very emotional. Now this could have had to do with the full moon. This could have to do with the full moon in Aquarius. This could have to do with the new moon in Cancer. So around the new moon in Cancer, you either walked away or came back. So I'm really getting a message here about Taurus walking away. You walked away from something chaotic and emotionally manipulating. You walked away from something that was, you know, you were very emotionally invested in it. You know, you really valued. And when Taurus values something, whether it's emotional, physical, whatever, they do not give up easy. So this is resonating with me, and I hope it's resonating with you guys. But we walked away from something very emotional. This was a person, place, or thing. Some of us, it was a job. Some of us, was it was a kid. Or, you know, for most of us, it was a relationship. A lot of us, this was walking away from all of it. We walked away from our family. We walked away from our home. We walked away from our love. And we did it so that we could start a soul journey. We did it because we knew this chaos was karmic. We could feel it as the high priestess, as the high priest, the hierophant, right? We knew it was tradition. So this has to do with the full moon or it has to do with the eclipse or the new moon. So, you know, the fact that the Ten of Cups is here, it's like, I feel like we walked away from our happy home that we knew we belonged in, but it's okay because we came back or something like that. So some of us didn't come back though. Others of us walked away from the Ten of Cups because we knew our own worth and we knew where we belonged. And we didn't belong in chaos. We belonged in happy harmony. So some of us walked away from the Eight of Cups to get the Ten of Cups. Like, fuck you. I don't need these Eight of Cups. I got this over here. I got Ten Cups over here. That's as complete as I need. So you can take your Eight of Cups and drink yourself away and, and be in your emotions. I'm walking towards my soul. I'm walking towards the way that I feel, not the way I felt. How I feel has changed, so I'm following the moon's energy, and maybe this is going to happen on the Aquarius full moon, but I doubt it. I feel like this happened on the new moon, because the new moon is it would fall in this category. Now we're going to move towards the end of July, so this could very well be the, the eclipse in Aquarius, but I feel like this was about the new moon in Cancer. When the new moon in Cancer came around, a lot of us collectively figured out where we belonged home-wise. This is about knowing where we belong, Taurus. So very, very, very beautiful message there. We walked away. Some of us came back. Others of us walked and found something else. But I did see that we walked away, you know, because we knew we belonged in a more harmonious environment, right? It was too unstable. It was too chaotic. So let's move into the second week or the second half of the month. We've got a reminder Wow. So we have the strength card again. So some of you are definitely dealing with a Leo. Um, keep in mind, you want to look at the sun, moon, and rising. But we got Leo twice here. We got the strength card twice in two different decks. So the, the second half of July is definitely centered around Leo energy. Because we've got, we've got a reminder here about Leo season. We have a reminder here not to forget our strength. We've got Leo, we've got Libra, we've got Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, and Aries, 
but we've got all the zodiac signs here. It don't matter what who you're dealing with or what the energies are. Just keep in mind what the message is. So there's a reminder here. Some of you is like, don't forget a Leo. Don't forget Leo season. Don't forget your strength, Taurus. Don't forget, you know, don't forget your, your innocence, your happiness. Leo represents all that. Don't forget your inner child. Don't forget to rest. I feel like the overall message here is don't, because the reason why the strength card is here as a reminder is because of the Four of Swords. Now, the Four of Swords is about meditation. Some of us are going to need to meditate in order to remind ourselves about how strong we are this month because we just went through so much chaos as Taurus. Okay, people don't understand how it feels to have Uranus in our first house. Like, people don't understand it. All right, we just went through a literal tornado. We went through a spiritual tornado that completely came through and ruined a lot of stuff for us in July. And we're, we're handling it like earth signs, meaning that we're not exactly expressing our emotions to the fullest capacity. Because as earth signs, we don't attach emotionally to people, places, or things, or circumstances. But this was very emotional. It was very karmic. Yes, it's balancing out. Yes, we will get justice and fairness about it. Yes, we know where we belong now. Come the end of July, we're going to know where we belong. We're going to know where our happiness lies. But there's a reminder here to rest and regain your strength. These are two cards talking about strength in a different way. So there's only so much you can do, Taurus. Don't forget to take time out for yourself to meditate, to heal, to rejuvenate, to basically revive yourself. Because... To go through all this energy, it was very emotionally draining to walk away and we probably did a lot of crying and maybe we were really sad, you know what I mean? And just because it's all balanced out by the end of the month doesn't mean that the imbalance, the unstableness didn't drain the fuck out of us as Taurus. So we need to regain our strength now. Don't forget your strength. And don't forget your strength in Leo season. Don't forget your strength when it comes to your destiny, you know, and your heart and your your life, you are very strong, Taurus, for going through all this. The energy I'm getting from these cards is crazy. So please don't forget your strength. Because you completed a cycle. We've got a couple number 10s here. And we've got, we end the, the month in a very Leo surrounded energy. And if it's not Leo, I mean, it definitely is Leo because Leo season starts right here. But we also have a significant Leo energy coming up for us. But, you know, it's like maybe Leo season is spent, a lot of it is spent resting from cancer season. Like, Leo season could very well be the rejuvenation period from cancer season. Like, mentally, you definitely need to, to regain your mental strength. There's a reminder here about your strength, Taurus. There's a reminder here to take time out for you, to rest, to contemplate as above, so below, to heal. And there's a, there's a reminder here to meditate. So let's clarify the other strength card for Taurus. I mean, very crazy that we've got two strength cards there, you know, two Leos or Leo energy. Definitely Leo season at the end of this month. We end the month with Leo. So this is this energy is going to really come in and help us. I mean, Cancer and Leo are literally night and day. Leo is ruled by the sun. Cancer is ruled by the moon. Literally night and day. So what we have felt for the past month, we are going to feel literally the opposite of that in Leo season. Happiness, our egos are going to be back to life. We're not going to cry ourselves to sleep every night and cry over the drop of a dime. Like, you know, and we have another Leo. We have uh, Aries Sagittarius Leo. So we end the month, Taurus, on fire, you know, charging forward with strength. Charging forward towards our newfound passions, towards our new expression. You know, this is just very quick movement. The Knight of Wands is moving forward passionately. You know, he's protected. This is an Aries Sagittarius Leo. Some of us could have an Aries Sagittarius Leo, a very strong Aries Sagittarius or Leo, coming in at the end of the month. And they could be coming in to confuse the hell out of us. We, we, we go through all this in July just to enter Leo season confused as fuck. All right, we're blinded towards a certain decision. So the reason why the Knight of Wands is on the deck or on the table is because of the Two of Swords. So some of us have, some of us have a choice to make between two fire signs. Some of us have a choice to make between two living situations. Some of us have a choice to make between two, two, two different karmic paths. 
But let me tell you something, it's not going to help anybody to sit here and ignore the way we feel and keep this blindfold on. It's time to take the blindfold off come the end of the month. We've got that crescent moon up there showing. So it's definitely, and it's interesting that we have that crescent moon there because we have a crescent moon on the forehead of this person. So there's a new beginning that we, we know of intuitively. But for some reason, we are a bit at a crossroads as to what to do, what to think about this new beginning. Because this is about what we think, right? It's swords. So it's not like we're not actually moving because we have the Knight of Wands. So we're actually, we, are, we are moving forward passionately no matter what route we choose. Remember, we had the Two of Wands as well at the beginning of this reading. Taurus has a choice this month. And it's like we might move faster physically than we do mentally in, in Leo season. Because mentally, we, we end July confused. We are confused about a new beginning, quite literally. Because this, this is the underlying energy for the reading. There's two different new beginnings that Taurus has to choose from. And we definitely, maybe it is okay to have that blindfold on because we need to follow our intuition. We need to, to listen to our emotions. And maybe our mind is at a standstill, but our emotions are, we learned a lot emotionally. So make sure you're not ignoring your emotions in Leo season because emotions are... Leo season does symbolize emotions for Taurus in Leo season because it's the fourth house. Okay, so we might have decisions to make about where we live, but this is coming in quick, guys. There's going to be some kind of fiery message that comes in, all right? And it's going to be because of that fucking chaos that we felt, all right? So there's a message here about something that fall, fell apart. We might have felt left out in the cold financially, all right? It might have to do with the Sagittarius because we have temperance, we have the Ace of Pentacles coming through. We have the King of Cups. So I'm not sure if that means anything to you, but I feel like this is not something coming in. I feel like this is a decision to start something new or to fix something that fell apart. But we've got a tower in the Eight of Wands. We've got, we've got a message coming in that's going to crumble everything down again. And it's going to confuse us towards the end of July. We are confused about a very, very fast new beginning that's coming in very very fast new beginning and no wonder we need to to have strength for this because leo season is gonna literally light us all on fire but it's about honoring those roots taurus because we found out a lot about our happiness in july and we might have found this out through chaos we might have found this out through not knowing where the hell we're going through feeling homeless or broke or unemployed Sometimes it takes dark to show you light, and we've got the dark showing you light here about your home, about who and what and where you belong, and this is very karmic, I want you to remember. So the fact that you've reached emotional fulfillment and you've understood the fact that you belong there karmically, there's going to be a lot that charges forward towards you at the end of the month. This could be your energy charging forward to something, but it's kind of hard to believe that when we are ultimately going into August confused about what new beginning to start or maybe we start a new beginning and we're just kind of confused as all right so what now you know what i mean like what do we do now that we start this new beginning either way it's coming in very quick which is reiterated by the eight of wands and this knight of wands who is charging right towards leo so this is leo season coming in quick don't forget your strength stay grounded taurus know that you belong in a place of emotional fulfillment and happiness and that you are gaining justice over all these energies, okay? So that is all I have for you, Taurus, for this month. So sorry the videos were late, but I am, as far as I know, I mean, you just seen this reading. And I have a Taurus moon, so I'm definitely, this was so spot on for my Taurus moon. I'm going to be watching this again uh, later on, just so I can hear everything right. You know what I mean? Because i just kind of been channeling. I don't hear everything that I say. So I'm going to watch this again. Keep in mind, you need to watch your moon sign because the moon signs have been activated and we will resonate more with the moon sign right now. And then when we go into Leo season, it's back to the sun sign. So you might want to watch your moon sign for July because there's going to be messages there, okay? If you guys want to work with me on a more personal level, I am offering readings. I have, I'm going to be offering $35 retrograde readings for the rest of July all the way into August. So if you want to know what this retrograde season is causing for you, please just 
um, go ahead and click on my PayPal and you can just leave me a message saying I would like my here's my $35 for my retrograde reading and we can go ahead and look into the retrogrades I'll pull a card well I'll talk about all the retrogrades and where they're happening for you and then I'll pull a, a tarot card for each retrograde as advice and other than that I offer all kinds of readings I do past present and for future readings I do I just like when I just give guidance you know I, I give guidance for readings um, and I've never ever gotten a bad complaint all my readings are extremely accurate especially for Taurus so I would love to work with some of you guys on a more personal level because I got that Taurus moon that could really get in deep with the emotions of your reading um, but yeah guys uh, as far as I know I'm gonna be here recording please keep you might want to subscribe to me and hit the notification bell so that you're notified notified every time I upload a video because I do plan on uploading Mars videos, Neptune retrograde videos, and um, Chiron videos. So yeah, and I will be uploading an Aquarius eclipse video, and I might even be talking about the Cancer eclipse because that was really important. So lots of videos to record, guys. I've been gone for a month, so I got a lot to catch up on. Really happy I was able to record your video, though. So hopefully this resonated. If you have any questions, please contact me or post it in the comments below, and I would love to talk to you guys more. But until then, I will see you in August in Leo season. Bye!